Thank you for joining us today. Uh, we've got a great topic today on using Presto for interactive and ad hoc queries. Um, we do want today's webinar to be interactive, so if you have questions during the presentation, please do submit them uh, and we'll answer them as we go. Um, we'll also be recording today's webinar uh, and we'll share the recording and presentation following today's live session. Thanks again for joining. Um, I also want to thank our speakers today. Godin Yao is the Principal Product Manager at Kubel, and Sir Yao is the Solutions Architect here at Kubel. Um, so with that, Godin, I will hand it over to you. Thanks, Steve. Um, good morning, everyone. So today's agenda, we're going to give you a quick introduction uh, of Kubel. Uh, so if you, you're new to the um, to know Kubo, uh, uh, you will know who uh, uh, we are and we, we, what we do in the big data and the cloud area. Uh, we're, we're also going to talk about why we want to recommend Presto and what, what are the typical use cases uh, when you consider Presto in your enterprise um, workload. Uh, last thing, we'll talk about the, the Presto adoption, growth, and any, anything special with Kubo Presto that you should consider. We'll, we'll, we'll end up with the demo, um, then, then we can go to the Q&A. All right, so just uh, uh, a quick intro to, to you guys about who, uh, who are we and what is Kubo Data Platform. So without showing anything here, a, a simple sentence to describe Kubo is we are a, a big data platform uh, which provides a, a variety of um, big data services, including all these um, um, open source engines, um, machine learning, um, data ingestion, um, all these workloads that uh, today every every big company would would require. Kubo is a multi-platform, um, uh, sorry, multi-cloud um, platform. So we support all these uh, mainstream uh, clouds. Uh, in the market, so it doesn't matter uh, which cloud you are um, um, in favor uh, with. Uh, so Kubo uh, has the product uh, ready uh, on, the, on these platforms. So um, the customers uh, we usually uh, work with, they already put their data into the data lake. So we only deal with uh, the cloud storage. So that gives the advantages to um, separate the storage and the computation. So when, as a customer, you come to our platform, Kubo um, has all these uh, open source engines uh, packaged, and we also made um, some significant improvements and optimization on top of these open source packages. These are not just uh, um, optimization within the engine themselves, but also optimization when these engines uh, interact with the cloud storage, uh, or they need to collaborate uh, within each other. So these are all these um, improvements that you'll get when it comes to the Kubo platform. So um, typically our, our customers, they all have uh, different personas, uh, like the data engineers, um, data analysts, data scientists, and of course the, the platform administrators. So during the, um, the field um, practice, uh, uh, Suryat, uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about these personas and what do you see among our customer base? Sure. Um, so as we see, typically, um, when we have three kinds of personas who interact with um, any data landscape, and um, starting with data engineers who basically prep the data, ingest, and transform the data, making it available for the data analysts. Uh, once the data has been prepped up, um, data analysts come into picture and they help in building reports um, and uh, on top of the massage data that was made available to them. These kind of reports that they build um, primarily fall into batch and ad hoc. Um, and then finally, we have the data scientist team, which primarily run AI, ML algorithms um, to support and find big data insights that are being loaded. Um, to do all of these activities, they typically uh, use the engines that is being displayed here, which is um, Spark, TensorFlow, and Presto. And depending on the use cases, 
um, they'll leverage each of these engines. Um, to make and give some examples, um, depending on, let's say, we have an ETL um, use case, they primarily use Spark and Presto. And the data analysts in the space um, who basically run ad hoc queries or reports primarily use, use Presto. Uh, for machine learning algorithms, um, they use Spark, MLlib, and TensorFlow. Um, uh, on top of all of this, uh, there is another persona that you see on your left side. It's the platform administrators. Um, they actually um, have a primary responsibility of taking care of the whole ecosystem. Um, they are responsible on maintaining the platform as well. Uh, the tools like Presto and Cubo help us um, maintain this self-service platform. And it has been increasingly um, being adopted in the industry uh, because it becomes very, very easy to maintain and cater to different personas that I have talked about in the um, Cubo workspace. So using that, um, these admin users um, were able to cater to more and more, um, uh, more and more personas on the platform. Uh, we have also seen a huge reduction in the admin versus users ratio. Good. So if, if I have to state some industry facts, I would say that um, now the user to admin ratios have gone down from as low as 1 is to 40. And uh, in some instances, we have also seen that they have gone into 1 is to 400. So um, with that, we, we can clearly see a huge advantage of a platform like Cubo, which is self-service and catering to different use cases and multiple personas. Um, Gordon, why don't you um, tell us more about Presto as an engine? Sounds, sounds great. Um, yeah, so um, let's jump on to the Presto um, topic. So why Presto? Uh, so this is more from a open source perspective, you have, if you have not heard uh, Presto, so Presto was originally developed by uh, Facebook back in, uh, I think, 2012. And, um, and, and immediately it got a huge adoption in, in big enterprises, uh, in enterprise companies. Um, and, and then we see um, more uh, growth uh, in, in the past few years. So when we talk about Presto, a, a typical um, and scenario uh, in, in the uh, enterprise use case, uh, I put, put them into four categories. So each category would have different uh, requirements in uh, expected response time and the total memory uh, requirements um, needed for running these queries. So as you can see in, in the chart, um, usually the ad hoc analytics, they are on the, the the left corner, left the lower corner. Uh, this is where you expect a relatively faster response time. Uh, the memory probably is not that high because usually it's a, it's a small query or you know ad hoc or, or on demand. Um, then there comes to the BI dashboard uh, reporting. So these are usually um, like either canned reports, which means you already have the table uh, with the, the facts uh, ready. You only need to run these. Um, data into uh, into the to, the to the visualization. So this is the second second tier. Then the exploratory analytics. Um, this is what I call um, it's pretty uh, random, and you cannot easily uh, get the answer from one single table or or, or two tables. Uh, usually, you have to write a complex SQL to join multiple queries with uh, different partitions, um, different predicates, or different conditions. Uh, so that's that's why this is usually uh, require require more uh, memory and uh, the expected time could be like running even for hours because it's uh, exploratory. Now the last part is the, the batch workload. Um, I know in Facebook they usually use uh, Presto uh, for the batch workloads. Um, in, in the industry, I know people are also using Spark, Hive, um, whatever the um, um, Airflow, like the, whatever the, the engine suitable for the for the, for the workload. And, and this, this one usually, uh, the, of course, the response time doesn't matter because you just uh, have a scheduled job and complete uh, the, 
the ingestion. So that's where uh, it sits on the on the top. So these are all the, the different uh, categories of the, the, the typical use cases. But why do we think Presto is uh, better for the ad hoc analytics here? Um, so here is a very conceptual um, comparison between um, Presto and other competitors. Um, we know that the, 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 the biggest advantage of Presto is it, se it separates the storage from the computation. So which means um, when your data volume grows, um, you don't have to maintain a large cluster to accommodate the, the volume of the data and put them into all, the, all these machines. So a, a, like a, a typical on-premises setup for um, uh, a, a database engine we, we've seen in the past uh, is you have to grow your cluster alongside with your storage. So that's where the first line you can see that these are, uh, this is a, a proportionally um, growing line or when your data is growing, your, your computation cluster is also growing, then the cost is growing. So there's no way to avoid that if you don't separate the computation from the storage. On the other side, Presto, um, as long as the cluster can handle the, the largest query that are all, the, all your users uh, may, uh, may submit, then technically you can, you can just maintain this cluster size. You don't have to ever grow uh, this, this cluster. While your data is growing, um, the cluster can always handle the largest query uh, from any of these users who are going to submit them. Now, um, in, 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 the, in, the, in, in the recent years, uh, we've seen alternatives uh, from competitors, like they put a computation plus a storage expansion. So this is um, a, uh, I would say, like um, a, a patch solution to the uh, the storage and the uh, computation combined, the, the legacy solution, because um, competitors, they would realize, okay, the, the, the cost is growing to, to, with, with a similar performance. Um, I, uh, my customers cannot afford more um, investment in, in, the, uh, uh, in the computation itself. So they, uh, they um, developed something to extend the storage. So in this solution, uh, you can relatively keep the computation uh, cluster smaller while you read uh, the data from the external storage and then you process them together in the, uh, in the computation cluster. Now th that, of course, has uh, incurred the data process cost uh, because they usually charge separately when you read the data ex from external to this computation then process. Uh, versus Presto, there's no additional charge because it is designed to handle the, the data volume uh, from external. Okay, so with that being said, um, I think this is a quick summary, I think just from a very high level, uh, from an open source perspective, why we think Presto has become a good solution in, or the, the best solution in the cloud if you want to do the um, analytics. So the first thing is, of course, the, the, the storage and the computation, they're separate. You can scale them separately. You can swap the computation uh, cluster. Um, sometimes you only need very small cluster because you know the, the workload is going to be small and it's sporadic. Uh, there's no heavy workload. And sometimes you know this is going to be a heavy workload, although they're all sitting uh, top, on top of the same data, data set. That's the data lake concept that you put everything in the cloud storage. Um, the, the, next, the next benefit is the federated data source. Uh, um, as you know, um, Presto, uh, uh, even in open source, there are dozens of connectors uh, has, uh, have been built just to connect to Presto as a query engine. So the data source could be sitting in all the NoSQL databases uh, in the big data, you know, uh, database like Hive, uh, there's also relational database connectors like a SQL Server, Postgres, and other proprietary data, data stores. So that will give you a very um, easy way to transition into the cloud if you are still sitting on um, uh, some of these on-premises setup, like a Teradata or uh, a Tiza. Um, if you think, oh, there's too much, if I want to move them suddenly into the cloud, then the, this federated data source gives you a flexibility uh, um, and, and buy you some time when you consider 
moving to the cloud. Uh, the third part is the uh, the fast analytical query. We, um, so Presto is uh, is designed to run everything in memory. Although recently we added uh, spill to disk uh, features in case there's a spill, so the query won't fail. But the original design was to run everything in memory, so that that would be very fast. So that's why it's also good for the uh, ad hoc analytics. The last point is um, Presto has a very strong open source uh, community. Um, so in the Bay Area, uh, there are um, big companies that are using um, Presto, uh, like like what I mentioned, uh, Facebook. There's also Uber, uh, Lyft, and LinkedIn. These are all big companies using Presto. They the, they scale to like thousands of nodes um, in their deployment, and um, the ecosystem is, is very strong, and we have um, a, a strong community to uh, keep contributing and innovating with the new ideas. So, um, with all of the uh, all of the information about um, Serena, why don't you tell us a little bit about our Cubo Presto customer growth? That will probably give our audience a more um, uh, in, uh, information, like how this is growing in the past few years. Sure. Thanks, Gordon. Um, moving on 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 the adoption of um, Kibo and Presto in particular uh, in the industry, we we actually managed to pull some reports, and we can see that we do about two million compute hours month on month, um, which is um, a clear growth of about six times year on year. So we have been literally um, having more compute hours on the Kibo platform and to be specific on the Presto. Uh, we also have seen that um, there have been more, 34 times more commands uh, being fired on Presto than on Spark as, a, as an engine, um, and which clearly tells us um, that there has been an um, multi-engine adoption in the industry, which uh, which is going up very fast. In fact, um, if we if we want to compare um, two years of um, adoption from different industries, um, let's say on 2017, the stats here clearly show us that there were about only 24 percent of the customers uh, using a single engine platform. Whereas when we write after a year, uh, which is 2018, we see that only 14% of the customers are on the uh, single engine platform, which means that more and more customers want to be on a multi-engine platform. And based on the different personas that we talked about before, Gordon, um, this is seen as an increasing trend where uh, different personas would like to have the flexibility of being able to use multi-engine and support their needs, optimize uh, to their use cases. So all the so, different so, so personas. Sorry. So so basically, uh, so you're saying um, we we would recommend the right engine to the uh, to our customers for the right workload. Is that is that the the case? That that is correct, Gordon. Um, because different personas would like to use different engines on the line to trigger that kind of use case, um, which means that there is an increasing uh, demand for a platform like Cubol, which can cater and support multi-engine. Um, this is one more slide um, where we we clearly see there has been. Um, uh, six times growth, um, um, and when I move on to specifically on Cubo's Presto, uh, we see about two million commands being fired every month, which which actually means only on um, Cubo Presto we see a three times growth every single year. So, um, so that's. Could you give us a specific customer story about their Presto use case? Um, sure. Um, we actually take one user story of the uh, customers that we have, and it's Ibotta, where um, they have completely seen um, a total cost of ownership savings um, of over fifty percent. 
um, uh, because of the queries that they run against the different cloud-based data warehouse that they have built. Um, and, and typically, this, this total cost of ownership benefits they have because of the different uh, user experiences uh, which we are being delivered um, because of the different personas querying and needing the different platforms and multi-engine on the line. Having said that, um, the data science or analyst team, they can easily onboard on a single platform, which is Qball, and hence query data which has been prepped, ingested, and the data lake that's been built on the cloud can be queried. Um, saying that, um, Ibota has um, clearly achieved a victory on the TCO using Cubo and Presto as a platform. Yeah, so definitely, Ibota is a great use case. Um, as I also heard, I think uh, they saved a lot um, by switching to the to the to Cubo platform, and like uh, as Ria just mentioned. Uh, it's a it's a great um, not just about the cost saving but also uh, saving the uh, maintenance, saving the uh, context switching. They don't have to go to different engines by themselves. And uh, when they switch workloads with uh, with Kubo, it's a unified platform. So then uh, I think we've heard enough about uh, open source Presto. Then why made what makes uh, Kubo Presto special and unique? Uh, what's the advantage in in Kubo Presto that uh, we want to show to our audience? Um, so here um, you can see from the slide. I want to address that from um, two different uh, aspects. One is Kubo as a platform because Kubo Presto is built on top of the entire QDS platform. There are certain foundation uh, that we shared with all the other engines uh, running on, on this platform, and there are advantages like uh, there's multi cloud support, there are a BI tool integration, and there's uh, automatic uh, custom management, which uh, will save you on the cost, on the maintenance, on the admin uh, resource. Um, there's also the cloud storage. Um, optimization we made uh, on, in, inside of the foundation, and, and there's uh, enterprise level security and the monitoring we build as a platform. Now, uh, the other aspect I want to talk about is uh, the specific um, improvements that we uh, as Google uh, contribute or uh, made to the Presto code base. Uh, so these are these these. These improvements uh, differentiate us from other uh, Presto vendors or other, other solutions. So um, the first thing I want to talk about is the, the BI integration. Um, uh, so as the, the title says, why Presto is a good ad hoc our engine, we cannot avoid talking about all the BI integrations. Uh, from our customer, customer base, we know uh, a lot of analysts, they don't even um, come to the uh, UI uh, of, of the vendors to run their queries. Their day-to-day -day interface is BI tools. So that's why the BI tool is so critical um, to make the entire experience uh, uh, good for, for these um, analyst um, users. So um, in Cubo, um, the, uh, the way we uh, design the whole BI integration with our driver, with our um, BI tools, is we, um, we have a logging API, so which means you don't have to um, um, put the, the um, host name, password, uh, IP address, um, so this information usually uh, as the admin you don't want to expose to the end users. Now you can avoid that and just using the API token, it's simple and only unique to every user. Um, there's also cluster automation built in when uh, you use Kubo driver integration with these BI tools. So when the, the analyst launch the query through BI tools, um, the cluster will be automatically uh, started, automatically manage their lifecycle, and automatically shut down when the, the job is finished. So there's no extra maintenance or Monitoring required from your admin team uh, when you use these. Uh, we also keep all the history um, in, in, in our logs 
for your auditing or for your um, query, um, if you want to see your query history, who filed these queries, and uh, et cetera. So these are all kept um, in, in the platform. In, in the last slide, there's other feature integration uh, included when you go through these, uh, these driver and uh, uh, the BI tools. So as we said, we are a multi-platform um, 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 uh, service. So that's why you can see we support the Power BI with Azure. Uh, like uh, we, we support a local as a partner. We support a Tableau. And another thing uh, I, I do want to highlight here is uh, what we call a Presto notebook. Uh, this is a, um, a notebook powered by Zeppelin. This is built within the platform. So in case you don't have a uh, BI solution yet, or, or you just want to run very simple charts and uh, get a quick notebook uh, to share within the organization, within the team, uh, you can use a personal notebook and it, it serves like a dashboard in the reporting purpose, uh, very, very, very lightweight. Um, to give you a specific example on Tableau, so you can see here, uh, we have uh, built a new um, Presto connector, which is based on the Tableau connector SDK. They just released this uh, early this year, uh, so you need a, a newer Tableau version to, to try that. But after that, you will see um, a Cubo Presto appeared on the menu, so um, you don't have to um, configure uh, like a host name or password like what I showed here. The only thing you need to know is wh where is, the, is your, press, uh, your, your Cubo environment endpoint so we have multiple endpoints end for different regions, different environments. Uh, then you just put a custom label in your API token. Then you can connect. There's no uh, passwords or, or host name. So what, 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 what the convenience um, this provides is uh, suppose you need to maintain, do some uh, maintenance or let's say one cluster is failing, you have to switch the cluster. Um, there's no change on the client side because they're connecting not through the, the IP or the, the host name, they're connecting through a label. Um, as the admin, you can just drag the label from one running cluster to another, then the connection is resumed and in the, in the, it's a smooth switch. There's almost zero downtime on the, on the client side. Then you can shut down the prob problematic uh, cluster and spin up other things uh, as you wish. So these are the kind of very simple and uh, um, uh, integration that we provide. Um, these are built on top of the Cubo REST API with a Simba um, um, uh, SDK. Simba is the, the kind of the driver SDK vendor that we use. I think 99% uh, of, the, of the, the big data vendors are using Simba's driver. All right, so that's the part of the BI uh, integration. So uh, next I'm gonna talk a little bit about the, the, uh, the platform uh, automatic uh, customer management and what the specific uh, features related to this uh, custom management we built in, inside uh, Cubo Presto. Uh, like what I said, uh, our platform um, kind of orchestrates the entire uh, deployment, the cluster lifecycle management, uh, when to spring up the cluster, when to scale the cluster to, to its, its um, um, capacity that it can accommodate your workload. So, um, on the, uh, the the platform side, there's of course the all these cluster auto uh, start terminate auto scale. These logics are, are built in. Um, uh, you can see in the in the in the graphs below um, these um, blue um, blue areas. These are the um, the spot nodes. We, we use AWS as an exa uh, example. Um, the cluster size is not uh, fixed. It's it's dynamic and it's it's changing based on your workload how many uh, concurrent queries going through the cluster, uh, how much memory is consumed, how many users are using the cluster. So these are all the parameters we consider and you don't have to maintain and manage or monitor. Everything is automatic um, based on some simple configurations. Now, on the Presto side, uh, we already have this good uh, foundation we, we, we shared with other engines. What's, what specific we do for, for Presto? Uh, so Here's the things I listed. For example, we do auto retry during spot loss. So this is to say, okay, when I get a new spot, spot node, or what if I, I lost the spot? Or what happens to query which is running uh, on these spot nodes? 
uh, am I going to lo uh, lose my, my query and lose my result? Uh, so, so we built this uh, retry logic to automatically resubmit the query uh, which uh, failed due to the uh, spot loss, so you don't have to take care of the, the, the resubmission uh, logic, and you will, you, everything's transparent, and you finally get your result. There's also um, research group-based dynamic uh, sizing. This is um, a feature uh, from um, open source. Open source can control which user to use, how, how much resource in a cluster through the resource group. Uh, we uh, leverage this feature, but build our specific logic to also dynamically assign the cluster if you have configured these resource groups with your, your presto. So that gives you better control uh, in terms of how and, uh, and how, these, how your individual users or individual user groups uh, can, can leverage the cluster. Um, there's also um, strict mode uh, and heterogeneous. So strict mode is more like to prevent users from hogging the entire cluster. So say if you have a user who submitted a query without any um, predicates, it's going to scan the entire data and uh, um, occupy the entire cluster. So strict mode will prevent that from happening and tell the user you have to put some limitation in, in these queries. Um, heterogeneous is another interesting um, feature we recently added to, to Presto. Um, this is not, not a new concept, it's it, it just to say uh, when I provision my cluster, I can use different instance types. I, I use C5, I use R4, all these different nodes, um, just to um, put them together and uh, just to, the goal is ready to finish the job. Now, heterogeneous um, provides the flexibility where there's no spot um, instance available in certain um, uh, soon or, or this specific type is not available. Uh, you can replace that with a similar memory or CPU configuration uh, um, uh, instance type uh, through a heterogeneous um, setup. So, so these are all the other things we built with, with Presto to um, leverage the, the entire cluster management lifecycle. Um, I'm, I'm just going to move faster uh, given the, the time. So the cloud storage um, performance, like what I said, is um, Again, on the platform side, uh, this is to um, to do the um, op optimization uh, when we read uh, files from the cloud storage. Now, using S3 as an example, um, we have modified um, Presto's uh, split computation logic, so we will invoke the listing only at the parent level, the parent directory level. So, uh, if you're not familiar with S3 um, API, so if, if you call these um, listing from um, the inside of the directory, then it will list all the smaller files, like one by one. This is very time consuming. So that's the, the thing we did. And we only invoke one time at the, the direct level. And we open ahead um, even before the, the actual uh, spread job starts. So we already get these files. So that would significantly reduce uh, the I.O. latency. Um, and another area in the, in the platform is really um, the security um, um, aspect. So you can see this onion uh, diagram, uh, multi multi layer, uh, multi uh, facade um, design. Um, at the top level, um, it's of course the compliance. There's all these standards we have to meet. Um, um, in in the in the infrastructure layer, um, Cubeable, we have this. Um, um, we set up everything uh, through VPC security group. Um, there's uh, SSL communication, and you can, as a customer, you can opt in a data dog a monitoring to check the cluster health um, and, and the traffic. So these are all built in within the platform. Um, at the physical layer, um, so um, users can set up their storage permission. And as an example, we have integration with uh, Azure. Active Directory, so if you use Active Directory uh, or OAuth, you can uh, integrate it with that and control the storage permission. Now, in, in the, the last core uh, area, it's the logical data access. So this is typical, um, like a database permission or table permission or the view permission. Um, previously, people, uh, the DBA usually use SQL to grant these permissions. We, we definitely support that. You can use uh, like a hive authorization to run these DBAs. 
uh, we recently also added um, Apache Ranger support. Now, so if you're familiar with the Ranger, you can configure uh, these policies through um, Ranger, and they have a holistic view who has a, a, a access to which table. Um, there's a few other um, areas, um, which is really the core engine performance. So this is the dynamic filtering, and there's no one called drawing routing. I'm going to talk these two together. So dynamic filtering, um, this is not a new concept um, in the database, uh, but it, this is um, uh, kind of recent, recently added in, in Cubo distribution. Uh, the concept here is when you're drawing um, two tables, um, they're already drawing condition in the in the, in the SQL statement. So when we uh, scan the data from storage uh, and read the data from cloud storage to the, the engine, we can do runtime and partition pruning with these. Uh, this is the this is ready to reduce uh, first the the, the 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 data volume transfer, and then uh, it it um, help to uh, accelerate the the drawing. Um, uh, efficiency. Um, the drawing reordering is, is also pretty simple, but 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 this is very effective. Um, we know when you join two tables, there's um, um, the bigger table, which uh, usually uh, on the probe side, this is like the fact table has all the uh, the data. And another side is we usually call it the build side. Uh, typically, it's, it's a smaller table, so use the smaller table to join the big table, then you, you don't have to go through the entire, um, so you, you, can, you, can, you can just put the smaller table in memory, then you, you go through the big data, uh, big table, uh, that's, that's usually more efficient. So the drawing reordering will leverage the table set uh, to determine which table is larger, which table is smaller, then they put it smaller in the right place. Now, we also added a additional um, work uh, even with tables uh, who, uh, that, that does not have the sets, we will estimate the size based on the table file size on storage. So th this is very convenient. Even you don't have the, the sets with, with your table. And we also determine the join distribution type, which one is more efficient. We have hush join and uh, broadcast join. So to determine um, these things. So you, as you can see, there's significant uh, performance we've seen. Uh, after enabling uh, both dynamic filtering and the drawing route array in our distribution. So the last part I want to say, uh, mention here is the uh, the Rubik. Um, Rubik is a file block cache. Um, this is again in um, engine uh, neutral um, framework. Um, we we use that um, mainly in uh, um, Presto engine because it, it, it's more beneficial uh, in the ad hoc scenario. So, uh, so Rubix, uh, you can see here, this is the open source project uh, initiated by Cubo. Uh, you can find the source code and uh, all the details on, online. Um, it doesn't cache the entire file, which was some other framework does. Uh, we only cache the file chunk. Uh, it, so this is much smaller um, and more efficient. And in the um, when, and so, we, uh, when you see uh, these uh, performance uh, uh, improvements, um, we, we see in average that's about a 20% uh, when we do the, the, the Rubik. So right now in, in um, Cubo's custom base, uh, roughly 50% of Presto clusters are enabled with uh, this um, Rubik cache. Um, this is to further reduce the I/O uh, latency. Uh, instead of going through the S3 uh, I/O latency, now uh, the file will be cached in your local uh, desk when it's needed. All right, so I think that's pretty much the highlights I want to um, um, show to the audience. And in, in the um, three, I'd let's let's switch to your area and uh, give uh, um, people a little bit um, uh, tips like how we should. Um, uh, use uh, Presto with Kubo. Sure. Thanks, Gordon. And those were really, really nice statistics that you have shared to us. Um, now, I wanted to talk about uh, the best practices that we can adopt and make the most out of the keywords Presto. The first and the foremost is the usage of ORC data. And 
with sorting your data. So sorting your data is a prerequisite uh, to get the most uh, out of your ORC data uh, or ORC format adoption that you would do with your data. The reason is um, stands back to the fundamentals of ORC format, which is optimized row columnar format, which helps you store the maximum and a minimum value at the block level. This helps when you fire a query and if the underlying data is in ORC format and on top of it is sorted, helps you skip those blocks and perform much, much faster. Um, that completes on, on the first two best practices uh, which go as the first step to adopting QQO Presto. On top of that, as we already listened on um, joint reordering um, from from Garden, um, we can actually see that um, once the we have collected stats on the tables, and then trying to join those tables, um, it is very important that the optimizer and the application knows the size, the length, and breadth of that table. Once you have that, Kubo's Presto comes into picture where it can enable your join reordering based on broadcast and distributed type of joins. Um, not only that, um, it would actually help on um, dynamic filtering of the data that Gordon also was showing some stats right before. Um, the dynamic filtering is a very, very important and critical part of Kubo's Presto. Um, it actually helps you to push down those filtering clauses to the left table on the right table when you have a fact and dimension typical structure uh, that you are trying to pull the data out for. Um, dynamic filtering also um, comes along where you have a clause or a, uh, or a where clause predicate uh, that needs to be applied to a larger table. Hence, let's say if you have a fact, very big fact table, and you have dynamic filter enabled, and you're trying to join to a dimension table with a where clause or a join clause, um, it actually goes and avoids the full table scan on your uh, fact table, which typically is very, very big. Um, the, the, all of the four points that I've discussed um, will, will be incomplete if you, your stats are stale or your cache is stale. Uh, which means that we are sending incorrect signals to the whole application um, to pull and to optimize your query. So we should always avoid stale cache. Um, on top of all of this, um, data compression comes with an advantage of faster movement of data if required, which means data compression also plays a critical role on um, getting your queries being um, um, reply very, very fast on the Cubo's Presto plan platform. Now, uh, these are some of the best practices um, that I wanted to share with all of you um, on on Cubo's Presto. Um, for now, I actually want to go. I want to go ahead and show you how simple, how straightforward it is to adopt in Cubo's Presto. Um, Gordon, I would like to share my screen and show the show customers on um, how easy it is to adopt uh, to Qball. Um, can you confirm if you are able to see the screen? Yeah, I can see the screen. Okay. All right. Thank you. So um, this is this is the Qball's typical platform, and um, you it comes with these options that I display on my left. Um, it comes with the analyze, it comes with some notebooks, and it comes with cluster configuration. So this, this three-step process is all what you need to get started and to, to go to production to using Cubo's Now, um, here is a sample query um, that I wanted to show you all, um, which is basically come from an analyze window that we use. So let's say you have a you have an underlying data on the cloud and you want to fire um, a simple query with where clauses and group by and order by with a specific set of results set. You can just go to the analyze window, press the new compose button which gives you a untitled window. You can always 
just name this as um, the query. Uh, and then when you file the query, the results will be right below in the same window. Not only that, you can see the see the logs right in the same screen. So you don't have to hop around different screens. That's one of the advantages of this and the ease of use of the UI. Secondly, every query that I fire gets an ID uh, tag to it. And who is the person who has fired that query? What was the time when it was fired? If you can see, I have fired this query like four minutes back, and the results are here. Um, the more advantage of these logs are you actually see a lot of repetitive logs with a check on the checkbox like you know you want to filter, uh, filter some errors and warnings, only those will be available for you to debug. So debugging is very, very simple and straightforward. There are use cases where you actually want to see uh, only certain columns, and you can actually don't have to go back and rewrite your query and fire it again. You can simply use these drop downs to select what kind of uh, columns that you would like to be display displayed in the window. Now, we have also the flexibility of the number of rows that you want to display on a particular single window depending on the scroll. So. Uh, y there is also a way that you can actually preview some of these data. So this is only about the analyze. Once you have your um, ad hoc queries being um, uh, available and uh, fire here um, and the co and the logs uh, as well, then the second step is if you want to get into details of how your query ran. Uh, what were the different steps? What is the overall um, summary of your query? How was it actually fired? Um, so if I click, clicked on those query tracker, it actually takes me to the next new tab, which you can see the summary of the query. Um, what was um, the path in which this query was fired? So this is on a, this is a demo, so this was fired on this bucket that has the whole data is hosted on. Um, what is the actual state of the query? What was the underlying engine that was used? How much is the CPU? How many rows were fired? And what was the data size? Uh, this also comes with an advantage of downloading this whole data in the JSON format. Um, and moreover, the whole thing um, actually goes and displays at a task level that the query that you fire, what were the stages and the tasks that were executed and how many splits were generated. Um, if you remember from the previous slides that Garnet was explaining that the query gets split in, uh, there are splits that come out, and then those, based on those splits, um, the Kubo is presto works. Um, these are those details on uh, what are those private, private IPs which were used to fetch the data and the tasks were spun off. So this is the detailed log that you can uh, see based on the query. Now, not only that, um, there is a very, very interesting um, part here where um, you have something called as notebooks. Um, these notebooks are um, fairly straightforward where um, you, ha you can get away from a typical life cycle of reporting where you have to wait for one full day to get the same report generated or click multiple times. Um, these notebooks are a bunch of code that you can schedule to run at a point in time, including the graphs. Um, this is a small uh, notebook code that I am showing you here, which is actually telling you the quarterly sales uh, and based on what is the percentage of the goal, goal and what kind of job was developed, what is the forecast, how many bookings, what is the average deal, uh, not only in the textual format, but also in the graphical comparative manner. Um, more, more on that, you can actually draw uh, line graphs on data, which means that data to reporting is almost real time. Um, these notebooks can be scheduled, and you can always have this refresh um, whenever you want to be. Uh, that's about notebooks. Uh, notebooks are always a great tool to share, uh, collaborate, and be uh, productive in just by a click of a button. Um, now I'm going to show you how um, straightforward it is to create a cluster. Um, on the same menu tabs, if I go to cluster, 
uh, the very first is uh, different kinds of multi engines that we talked about that we support right now. Uh, you can just go to Presto, and when you click on the second next button, it takes you to the configuration. Here, you can actually name um, uh, name your cluster, and um, you can actually select different versions of Presto. So right now it is one, uh, 0 0.193. You can always have 0 0.180 and configure the cluster. Um, coming to the configuration of cluster, um, the critical thing that I wanted to tell you is uh, you have the flexibility to configure the master node um, based on your cloud stack um, uh, and then also the worker node based on your cloud stack to be configured. Uh, you can actually uh, give your minimum and maximum worker nodes uh, that is required, and this is uh, very important to kick, excuse me to kick in um, the auto scaling framework from QO. Uh, you can also configure uh, on which region this cluster needs to be configured, and uh, which is the locality and uh, standard features of um, any cloud. Um, company on the market. Uh, on top of that, um, we, we provide you an um, important feature called as the node bootstrap file. Um, often, we have seen in the industry that there is a need to do some pre-runs before um, your actual workload kicks in. This is where you can leverage the node bootstrap file. You can put in all your precursors um, that you wish to run before actually running your workload on the node bootstrap and place it in a uh, cloud repository. Here I have uh, mentioned a sample as on the S3, but this actually goes in and then runs as a prerequisite. Um, now, uh, it is often seen that um, in cloud, you always uh, need not have a running cluster. And you can configure on a cluster timeout option where you can actually timeout your cluster at a frequency of hours and as aggressively as minutes, which means that let's say you have run a query one and your cluster is idle, you can auto shut off the cluster and save um, on the cluster running unnecessarily with as aggressively as five minutes and as large as um, uh, hours that you that you want to filter it on, so so that that gives us the capability of <coughs> configurations. Moving on on the composition of the cluster, Kubol gives you full authority and command on this <coughs> deciding on the composition of the cluster, which means that there there is a flexibility of deciding what kind of demand nodes that you want, what kind of spot nodes and spot block nodes. Uh, each of these features um, has been elaborately explained in our website, Qbold.com. Um, I am currently showing you how Qbold's Presto helps you um, actually query the same underlying data much, much faster. We have um, we have uh, this, uh, we have actually publicized the benchmark and its performance uh, with the industry scale DPC DCDS, and you can actually see how the giant ordering and the dynamics filtering works. <clears throat> In a similar fashion, um, there is this composition, and then you can also decide what are the on-demand nodes, what is the minimum and maximum on-demand nodes. Um, excuse me, I just get a uh, sip of water. Thank you. So, on the on-demand nodes, these are those nodes that are always being available and avoid any query failing. Uh, if you have heard Gordon about uh, query retries on the line, this is the feature that comes into picture. Um, spot nodes is our most favorite feature for by any customer. We have leveraged spot nodes available on the cloud and reduce your cost uh, significantly. Um, and you, you can always configure the spot nodes to be fall back on the on-demand nodes by just by a click of a button, which is highlighted here using a tick mark and not tick mark. There is one critical feature uh, which we can show you on the advanced configuration tab. Um, tab. 
most of the demands that we get through the cloud uh, can be overridden, and these can be at the node level and the cluster level. So we have when you fire a query in the Kubo Presto, primarily it uses the system uh, heap memory, the reserve memory, and uh, the general memory. Each of these can be overridden based on this setting right here. Um, this can be configured at the node or at the cluster level. Um, and you can always have uh, security settings like the keys and the monitoring settings required for Kubo's Presto when you deploy them. Um, in the interest of time, um, I would like to stop here, Gordon, and um, give it back to you. With this, um, uh, I think we just have four more minutes. Um, Steve, you, if you if you want to pitch in here on any further updates. Great. Thanks, guys, uh, and appreciate it. Um, we are getting close to the end of the time, so I do want to pause and, and just see if anybody else had any additional questions. Um, we did get one question, uh, and Godin, I'll direct this to you. I, I think you covered it, but um, regarding ORC file format, um, can you maybe just read it again why that's recommended? Sure. Um, yes, uh, because ORC is a columnar store uh, format. Um, Presto, uh, when it designed its engine and the data processing, uh, it, it has um, uh, optimization on the columnar um, format. It, it will uh, easy, um, easily filter the the data uh, files based on the uh, ORC um, meta, meta information and uh, um, the predicates in the, in the SQL statement. Perfect. Thank you. Great. Um, so we are almost out of time. So I want to thank everyone for joining today's session. Uh, as I mentioned at the start, we will be sending the recording as well as today's presentation out. Um, I would also encourage you, if you're interested, uh, to get your hands on Kubel uh, yourself. Uh, follow that link, kubel.com slash testdrive, um, for our free trial experience uh, where you can play with Presto yourself on Kubel. Um, also, we'll have a, a series of upcoming webinars over the, the next couple of weeks on different engines like Spark and Airflow, as well as some best practices around data engineering and building pipelines. So head over to kubel.com slash webinars uh, to see what's coming up. With that, I want to thank Godin and Tiroff for your time today. Um, it was a great session, and uh, looking forward to speaking with everyone again soon. All right, thank you.